Okay, now the uh, now the right, uh, so if you look at uh, look at the right deep nets right that sort of came out and then the sort of you know timeline right it's about see 2012 when all this wave started okay so we are hardly like you know it's a, it's a decade right so that's when this Alex net right when it when it came out right sort of you know, so so here right you see this Alex net so so you see the jump from 25 to 16 right until then it was like you no know, you no know, two percentage three percentage and so on. And suddenly you see a like you know a whatever right eight point jump from from say 25 to, to 26 to 16. It's like you know nine point jump or something. And then right everybody woke up, and uh, and of course right this also has to do with the fact that they actually created you know there was an image net you know so 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 right this is image net cha image net challenge. So of course somebody had to had to make that kind of a data set which should actually throw up this challenge right which means that you cannot have something simple and be able to solve these kind of problems. So image net itself was a database with about thousand classes. And lots and lots of images, right, within it, and then and then it was thrown up as a sort of a tough task to do, and then came this AlexNet, which showed which showed a remarkable accuracy on that, and then right following that, BGG came, right, this was the Oxford Oxford group, and then a Google Net came, and then came you know ResNet, and all this, right. So finally, right, you're looking at something like 3.57. This is still old, right, 2015, right, but this graph just 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 tells you that. Uh, Tells you that uh, that for example, uh, you know, so at at this level, right, 2015, we have already surpassed what you know, humans can do. Okay, that means what this means is that if I were to show those images to you, right, you will end up not doing so well, on the average, right. So that sort of is, is the that sort of gives you a timeline. All this happened just too fast, right? In that sense, this time scale is nothing. Ten years is nothing, right? So before that, if you think about it, Gabor filters and all came like 50s. And people, they were still being used, and then right, people are people are sort of doing things, but then they were still they knew that they had a long way to go, and then suddenly these things came, and then uh, of course the data set part, right? I'll talk about it also. Okay, it's not like uh, it's not like right. I mean, you know, everything is uh, all the all the story is being told here on this one slide, right? This, this slide is just to give you an idea that uh, things really started looking up, right? In that uh, sort of a timeline. And then, uh, then object uh, this one uh, detection, right? That also became very, very robust. Before that, we didn't have this these kind of these kind of accuracies. Overfeed, then uh, RCNN, fast RCNN, then YOLO, and YOLO itself has several versions now. Oh, YOLO is like you look, uh, you only look once, right? And things like that. Some of these, right? We will talk about, okay, during the course, but very, very briefly, okay. Uh, this is just to tell you that you know image segmentation, which was again uh, using uh, people used to do do using Markov random fields in the the the, the you know in the earlier days. Then came this annotated kind of thing, right? Wherein you know people you know DeepNet could actually do a fantastic job, and uh, DeepLab is one of them, right? Which is which is which is very well known. Then then uh, okay then then some some of this fun stuff right like style transfer and things like that right I mean this you must have seen I'm sure you've heard about this like for example right you have you have a picture like this and then and then right, you have you have a painting like this by somebody right I mean it's like saying that how would this picture have looked like if that artist were to were to actually paint this right you sort of transfer the the style but then keep keep the content to be this you transfer the style of this guy onto this in order to be able to able to, able to right, show something like this. But again, right, this is like fun, you know, in the sense that there are lots of things which are unexplained here. For example, right, it's not even clear what exactly you mean by style. So people are just happy with something that just emerged. And I think these days, I thought I read somewhere, uh, this, is, uh, this is like two, three years old, right, that uh, uh, the first image that was created by the deep network was sold for a, was sold for, uh, I don't know, right, how much, for some, for some say, big amount. Now, that is like the first picture, right, generated by this one, a machine. I mean, you know, some fellow felt uh, felt excited about it and bought it for a whole lot of money. I wish it was one of us, right? After all, what does it take to produce some image? And then, anyway, I think there must have been something nice about it. Uh, but then the very fact that, right? Uh, so, so all of this has also has also right, you know, has also kind of say, thrown up other kinds of challenges, in the sense that, right? These days you can have images of, let's say, people, right? Uh, you know, who don't even exist. Right, so these generative models, which we are not going to cover, the generative models and all have become so good that they 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 generate human faces, and those faces don't even exist in exist on Earth, right? But they look very very realistic. So that goes into the forensics part, right? I mean that's that's even difficult, whether an image is real or not. Right? Here it's about transferring style, but then people can make lives very complicated. 
uh, then artistic applications right so okay yeah so translation and then video sort of you know sort of a generation audio generation so it's like saying that if i told you the audio right can you sort of can you sort of create a video corresponding to that audio so it could be like you know uh, like a wave sound of waves and then maybe it is supposed to again it right here you know it's like subjective right you, know, you can you can argue you know whether whether that whether that video produces really good or not because there is no single video that you can associate with it right if i just give you wave uh, sound of waves right i mean I mean, each one of you. If I think about, if I ask you, right, what kind of a video would you associate with? This? Each one will associate a, a different video, right? At the end of the day, there's no ground truth, and and you can't have a ground truth, right? Because it's like uh, it's like you know one, you know, which can which can uh, kind of right, map to map to several answers. So so that way, right? People have gotten away in a sense, right? Showing all this fun stuff. People have written papers and all, but I think that the real seriousness is coming now in the sense that right what really where really are the weaknesses of deep networks and you know and uh, this kind of domain change and what that entails and how these things right begin to crumble and all that right for example right in our own lab i mean right, we have seen that you know things that you just take off the shelf and if you and and you know some other people come let's say you know there is some other uh, you know user that right, who comes to you with a kind of bunch of images and says that see for example right, we had an example where uh, where you know it was actually you know a defense project so it's like you have a submarine right and uh, and it wants to know who's who's uh, who's around right on the you know on the sun surface so what it does is it has it has a periscope and this just comes out very fast right out of the water and then there's a camera right mounted on it and it just spins and spins really fast okay and the faster you spin the better because you don't want to hang around for too long because the guy up there will know that oh somebody is there and then he will know that there's probably a submarine down right so you don't want to show yourself off idea is that you come or come out very fast spin go down the problem is right so the problem is when it spins that fast right if you if a human looks at that image it looks terribly blurred because it's it's a it's a sweeping rate right and the idea is that is there is there is there some warship or something around you right that's what you want to know so just just take a quick sweep and sweep and come down and you look at that image it looks terribly blurred right and then and then they said okay can you kind of right do do a deep blurring deep blurring means remove the blur Okay, now we thought that oh, there are so many right, deep learning, such a mature area, right? Deep networks and deep networks, fantastic scores. People have written tons of paper. None of them worked. It's like that, right? So that's what I'm saying, right? So it's not like you know every problem is solved out there. The moment it's your turn, right? You will realize that it can kind of. That's when you realize the truth that these all have to be taken with a with a sense of uh, what do you say? I mean, you know, with a sort of a pinch of salt, right? Can't get swept away. all right uh, so uh, data sets right i just wanted to wanted to right, quickly show you i mean so see all of this it's still sort of engineered right in that if you did not have data you could not have done anything right none of this could have been, could have been done if you did not have data sets right and now only people are talking about self supervised ways of doing and so on but really the earlier days were all supervised right annotations annotations and annotations and for that right i thought uh, i thought what i will what i thought right i will do is i will i'm going to share right this kind of document with you right this is a very very nice document i mean which my students actually right uh, know made i uh, i cut off many of the many of the data sets from this which are not probably relevant to you guys okay but uh, okay so if you look at it right so uh, so this image net so there is coco there is emnest kitty i mean these are all data sets that you would have heard about Okay, for one task or the other, something for uh, for something for the segmentation, something for let's say vehicle surveillance, something for object detection, something for audio audio kind of AV sort of task, right? I mean, where let's say you have a vision plus audio, so lots of things, cityscapes, celebrity faces, again for face recognition and stuff like that, and then low light, you know. So there is something called low. I mean, and then there is something called I think there is so many of them. You know, I can't even remember the names of all of them, but there are all these yeah, LOL and then GoPro. GoPro is again something that is very very well known. You know, people do a lot of deep learning and all using that. So all these you see data sets are out there, and then one should realize that you know they have also been instrumental, right, in being able to enable what has happened. Okay, without these data sets, we couldn't have we don't we couldn't have come this far. And and there are groups right, that really work only on this. That's also very interesting, right? You should be should be aware that there are groups that target only making these kind of data sets. They never work on the work on work on the deep network per se. the job is to create create right uh, these kind of these kinds of data sets that 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 which they then share with the outer world and uh, their citations will go very high because everybody is using that data set right because it's it's very comprehensively done and that's how they they earn their fame not by writing papers that will solve the problem but by just sharing data sets open in the open right you just throw it open that also goes under a, goes through a review i mean you can't just say that take this data set right it also goes through a formal review and then right people know that okay right if this data set was exposed to the public and then it can take the area further up so right so data sets again right is is another 
is another big deal ok. So, we should not uh, we should not uh, sort of not not realize that ok. So, all of this I mean if you look at the you know right uh, very deep network and all you know ML right machine learning per se all started pretty early ok. It is like you know 1940s and so on ok. So, people had started right then and then uh, and then right, there was a point what is called uh, what is called you uh, know a dark age I will share that slide with you ok. There, there, there are some there are some there is a sort of a timeline right where you know it was considered a dark age because you know when let us say right people were actually excited about about a neuron about about modeling of actually a neuron uh, then there were some people that came along and said that hey look this cannot solve certain kinds of tasks which are still very simple. And therefore, you know dark age kind of followed right when let us say people sort of felt that hey look all the hype was probably unnecessary. And then again came came a sort of you know, you know a golden age when let us say people realized that oh right that problem could still be solved if you did this. And then it went on and then uh, this kind of backdrop right which is the one that everybody uses now in order to do the optimization right that came. And then and then again there was a dark age because the computing resources were not there, the, the data sets were not there. Then again the golden age started I do not I think around 2005 or 6 or around that time when data sets emerged right people were you know downloading like um, people are uploading like crazy right all kinds of data visual data multimedia data and then and then came the right GPUs and all and then ok and then of course right all of this happened ok. So, this idea of actually neuron right. So, the earliest was actually what is called this one a perceptron a, a perceptron. Okay, this was the this was the I mean there are all, there was also something called you know a McClock uh, this one Pitts model and all. I'm going to skip all that right because this is going to be a quick review right. A, a perceptron is what I mean. Let's kind of consider to be a basic neuron, right? And and the kind of form right that it has is the way our kind of neurons work right. So what you have is so the way so the way right you would uh, you would kind of right okay let me ignore this. So the way right you would kind of think about it is you have a bunch of inputs right which actually which which sort of enter let us say they are x 1, x 2, x 3 all the way up to some x n ok and then and then and then you do some operations inside here let us say there is some you see theta which will just will just kind of put in there and then out comes out comes your y ok. Now, this now this y y and then what you would have is you would have you would want to weight the inputs you will have let us say now w 1 weighting x 1 w 2 weighting x 2 w 3 weighting x n w n weighting x uh, w n weighting x n and so on right. And the and the and the and the but the basic idea is this right. So, this y right would actually take a value if your summation w i x i right was actually greater than or or, or no, equal to theta it will be 0 right otherwise ok. So, 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 so this combination right. So, for example right I mean here you have a nonlinearity which is which is which is to say that right. So, if you kind of right I mean you know think about what this what this value of y is right and and if you say that right this along this you have your summation w i x i right then what and let us say if your 0 is here then what you are saying is if this exceeds a theta value right your y goes to 1 else it is 0 right. So, that is like nonlinear right it is like it is like a step jump ok and then and then prior to that you have this kind of a kind of a right a linear operation going on which is a, which is a weighted summation of these of the inputs right. Now, this uh, this is uh, this is a perceptron a simple model right which uh, which apparently right mimics mimics what happens, but this is still a standalone right. The actual thing happens when all these neurons come together interact and so on that is when you have a deep network, but at the very very basic level you have what is called really a neuron right and when the, and right this is where this is where we will start ok uh, you know analyzing what this does and what kind of problems can this solve what kind of uh, what kind of a classification problem can a perceptron just one neuron do and then look at what it cannot do and then see right what else needs to be done in order for you to be able to solve more more complex problems ok. I will stop here today.